Energy is changing. The need to modernize and digitize networks and systems is huge. There are increasing volumes of connected assets across utility networks that need better communications whilst meeting the net zero objectives of the UK. Existing solutions providing remote connectivity are limited, have long delivery timeframes and can be high cost. Current solutions are prone to continental interference. Visibility and control of the electricity network can then be lost. The spectrum is limited. This needs to change. At Western Power Distribution, we have been trialling a new LTE solution to address these problems. Telecommunications is going to be a real enabler of the smart, flexible and digital grid of the future. And projects like this LTE project are critical in understanding how we can get data back from our 200,000 substations in the future and make sure that we can operate the network to keep the lights on for our customers. The UK electricity industry has been changing for over a decade. We've seen the closure of many large centralised power stations such as coal and nuclear and oil-fired power stations and being replaced by an abundance of more localised and renewable energy such as wind and solar. What's significant about these new forms of renewable energy is that they're connected onto our distribution network rather than the national grid transmission network. Think of our network as the A and B roads, uh, whereas the national grid is the motorways. And that means we're injecting power further down the grid and often at times we're pushing power the other way up the grid. So we operate our network at times which is 100% renewable. In fact, we have more energy than we need. So we're pushing that back into the national grid to transport it to other areas of Great Britain which have got less abundant renewable resources. But the future is not going to be just about new generating sources. It's also going to be about what we call the demand side. Customers are going to be adopting electric vehicles and renewable heat in huge numbers. We're predicting that we could be getting over 10,000 enquiries a week in the future. And for us, this is, brings a huge challenge. But with the challenge uh, comes opportunity as well. Because what we're going to be doing is to try and make use of the assets which are already in, increase utilisation of them. And we'll be doing this using solutions like LTE and telecommunications to pull back data of what the grid's doing and make sure that it's really earning its keep. And that's why projects like this LTE project are so critical to what we're doing in the future. Because unless we can see and we know what the grid is doing, obviously at that point we're not able to increase utilisation. So having secure reliable and resilient telecommunications is critical for the future. The infrastructure that we have today in telecommunications is based on 60s technology. It has evolved over time, it's gone digital, but we are still restricted by bandwidth, we're still restricted by having to coexist with other users, etc. So the system we're finding is becoming um, rather um, constrained in, in, its, in what we can deliver. Um, so we are having to look at completely new technology which will provide us with all the capabilities that the business needs moving forward into the future. There is a need for a reliable, resilient and secure communications network to monitor the increasing number of assets. Aligning with the net zero agenda of the future and supporting the transition from passive to active networks. The current PSTN network will be turned off in 2025 and various mobile networks such as 3G will be turned off in the near future. A solution needs to represent the whole industry and be available for all utility sectors electric, gas and water. Having multiple different networks for different utilities is no longer a smart or cost-effective solution. Our ambition is a standardised, flexible and dynamic communications network which is quick and cost-effective to deploy, that doesn't need to be licensed on all outstations, is spectrally efficient and satisfies the green agenda. LTE is the one technology that will meet the criteria that WPD needs. It's about efficiency, it's about safety, it's about security, and it's about resilience. And LTE has all those criteria in abundance. One of the key things that in increasing demand is data in forms of monitoring, system control. A lot of the networks that we have are deploying at the moment are sort of active network management. 
in the past, it was a control engineer would just initiate the controls from the system downwards based on information that's coming back from the substations. However, after network management is semi-autonomous, there will be an increasing need for autonomous systems out there um, to manage um, this vast amount of data that's going to be flowing through the network. And telecommunications must meet that demand. And the way to do that is a technology which can provide you with that base. It's very exciting to be at the beginning of something which is going to change and evolve telecommunications infrastructure of not only just WPD but also the rest of the utilities and all the other DNOs. And so to be at the forefront of that is quite, a, it's, it's quite a, 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 an honour to, to be involved in. Like any new technology or solution, there are challenges to address and overcome. Moving into an unstable world for generation and environmental factors, we need a system that is more resilient and more dynamic. The challenge I set my telecoms colleagues was to go out and find me a solution that is scalable, secure, resilient and reliable. And that's what they've done with LTE. The telecommunications network of the future needs to be scalable. We've got over 200,000 substations across Western Power Distribution and we've got 8 million customers. Those 8 million customers may well have several electric cars, several heat pumps and a whole house full of smart appliances. So we need to be able to support large numbers. The telecommunications network also needs to be secure. We live in a time of increasing cyber security threats and we're determined to make sure that customers' data is secure and there's no unauthorised access to the system. Our electricity grid often works at its hardest during storm events, so things like major snowstorms and blizzards in winter or flooding events at other times of the year. And we need to make sure that our telecommunications network is there when often we find that other commercial operators aren't there for us, either because there's been a power cut and their equipment's off or their network is congested due to other users. The LTE network that's been tested also needs to be reliable over a long period of time. Our assets have long lives, often lasting into decades. And we need to make sure we're working with service providers and parts of the industry who are able to upgrade and support our system over a long period of time. The LTE project is timely in that the availability of this technology is coinciding perfectly with just when customers are going to be buying electric cars in large numbers and replacing their gas boilers at home with electric heat pumps. This project is of national and international significance for Western Power Distribution and utilities around Europe, Great Britain and further afield. It really has the potential to transform and deliver a cost-effective solution for how we monitor and remotely control the smart grid of the future. I think this is truly a groundbreaking project in that it's testing a technology which hasn't had this application before and it's really going to be deployed on such a scale uh, because of the scale of the electricity network itself. It just feels like we've found the perfect solution to what otherwise would be a problem. For this trial we have installed a standalone private LTE network operating in band 87 with a bandwidth for 3 MHz. The LT network consisted of the core 3 Enode B base stations and 10 CPUs. The Enode B base stations consist of one free sector base station and two single sector base stations, providing coverage in the Taunton area. The 10 CPUs have been installed in a variety of substation locations, ranging from a grid supply point down to distribution substations. With each CPE, we have also installed an RTU, CCTV cameras and a fixed VoIP phone. In addition to these, we have also trialled mobile voice and data devices and an LV monitoring device. The hope for the future and this LTE project is a recognised need for change and investment. A low-cost, high-coverage, resilient and secure network that can be deployed across large volumes of remote assets for enhanced data connectivity to support the utility industry in meeting net zero targets for the future. There is a need for acknowledgement and appropriate funding by regulatory bodies and government that investment is required in communications as an enabling measure. Private LTE deployment is currently taking place in other parts of the world. 
During a consultation process for the 400 MHz band project in Ireland, Comer contracted Plum Consulting to examine the potential uses of this important radio spectrum. The report strongly suggested that this band was ideal for smart grids, given the quantum spectrum available, 2x4 MHz, the likely demand for smart grids, and also the fact that other potential uses had alternative solutions available to cater for them. So the first question that came out of Comreg's regulatory impact assessment was whether smart grids are required in Ireland. Comreg noted the support from international bodies such as the International Telecommunications Union and the United Nations due to smart grids likely positive impact on climate change. And then closer to home, the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland estimated that by 2050, smart grids will see an accumulated reduction in CO2 emissions of 250 million tonnes. The European Commission also encouraged the development of smart grids in member states and the Government of Ireland have also noted the importance of smart grids in their national climate and energy plan as well as its national development plan. The second question was whether there are suitable alternative solutions to cater for a smart grid and in summary Comerick found that alternate solutions such as telemetry or mobile networks were not suitable for smart grids as they did not meet the minimum requirements such as low latency, high availability and extensive geographic coverage. So after extensive consultation Comerick decided to reserve part of the 400 MHz band for smart grids and to reserve another portion of the band for other potential uses. After an award process, the utility operator in Ireland, ESPN, won all available spectrum in the band. Previous studies at Portishead and the NIA desktop project gave good hope that LTE is a solution. This proved coverage, capacity and scalability of LTE across two DNO regions and also demonstrated cost effectiveness. A fundamental change in approach is needed. The critical nature of the solution does not align with other solutions available commercially. The hope is for a harmonised network for UK utilities, alongside understanding from government bodies that existing solutions can no longer survive or meet the future data demands of the industry. For the NIA project, as part of a joint team with WPD, JRC carried out a detailed design study to assess the feasibility of using an LTE network to support the delivery of future smart grid functionality. As a cost-effective means of delivering the required connectivity, the NIA project was looking at overlaying LTE technology onto an existing base infrastructure. The project demonstrated that 2 times 3 megs of spectrum was sufficient to deliver the required data volume. From the busiest city centres to the remotest corners of the UK, the approach we took provided the required flexibility and scalability. So overall, the project demonstrated that LTE is a cost-effective solution. LTE is spectrally efficient and minimises technology risk as there is an established ecosystem and networks are widely deployed. And, as an internationally recognised open standard, there is a roadmap to 5G available. We are all aware that Spectrum is a finite limited resource. So while providing for national critical infrastructure was important, we have to prove to the government and the regulator that we are being as spectrally efficient as possible, not only on day one, but in the longer term. The choice of LTE provides future proofing in this respect, enabling the option of a shared network for all UK utilities, electricity, gas and water. As a leader in our industry, WPD recognised early on that understanding how a multi-service broadband data network would be designed, integrated, operated and managed was an important enabler for our future. Achieving this will be an important contribution to the national effort to combat climate change and meeting net zero carbon targets. I'm fortunate to be part of a team making a small contribution to this effort. These are exciting times for our industry. Developments such as this project will help transform energy markets and networks for the benefits of businesses and consumers. The LTE solution addresses the needs of different utility sectors operating in the same geographic area, offers flexibility, scalability and performance enhancement. An agreement needs to be reached on how and who will run the LTE solution in the UK offering a shared infrastructure for the utility industry. Sharing the costs across the UK utilities, reducing the need for multiple networks, and ultimately reducing the costs to bill payers. 
The hope is Ofcom will award Spectrum for the solution at the right frequency in alignment with already agreed international standards. This new solution will assist the UK government in meeting its net zero objectives. We've been working with WPD now for about three years, really to provide um, a proving point, uh, a catalyst on how modern mobile private wireless systems that are based on 3GPP standards can really deliver a number of uh, business benefits to utilities. And not only business benefits, but the adoption of modern grid use cases and applications. It's about investing in a technology which is future-proof. And we've been working with WPD to do exactly that, to prove that if you adopt this technology, position it well, run test cases to prove that it will deliver on its capabilities, this will put you in a good return on investment for many, many years and, and decades into the future. The trial is really about proving a number of things. The, the predictability of the system, uh, how the system can work from a multi-vendor point of view because it's based on standards. So it offers um, not only a, a number of quantitative outputs, um, measuring the performance of, of the mobile system, but a number of business benefits as well. Investing in the architecture today doesn't mean you rip and replace to move towards 5G. It just means you complement and you enhance what you already have and then start to enjoy higher speed throughputs and capabilities that 5G will, will bring. We've all had mobile infrastructure now for several decades and we all enjoy multi-services, whether it's video, data, uh, or even voice communication on those uh, mobile services. What we're talking about here is taking the benefits of that but making it private and assured for industrial purposes. For me personally, it doesn't get any better in operational telecoms. We're working with a very key customer who's really forging ahead with some key innovative ideas that are not innovation of the future, but it's innovation of the here and now. We've connected a significant amount of technology to the system to prove it. We are pushing that technology to its limits. We've seen some early indications that the system is performing far better than we would have expected it to, and it's holding up to its own significantly. During this trial, we have proven that LTE is more than capable of providing secure, reliable and resilient communications for SCADA, secondary SCADA and automation, LV monitoring, mobile voice and data, fixed voice such as VoIP phones and also CCTV, but that does need more careful configuration. However, due to the latency between sites, we have proven that LTE would not be suitable for inter-trip or protection circuits. The coverage of the network has matched what was predicted within the previous JRC-led innovation project. However, the resilience of the LTE network has shown that we have reached nearly 100% connectivity when losing a sector or base station, compared to the predictions of 60% connectivity found in a desktop study. For the trial, we started with a bandwidth of 1.4 MHz. This was then increased to 3 MHz. However, we believe from our findings that we would need a bandwidth for 5 MHz to facilitate a multi-service, multi-utility network. The LTE network has been configured with APN segregation to allow us to simulate the LTE network being used by multiple utility companies. The initial trial on this has been successful, however, further work needs to be done with this. We installed an additional CPE along with an RTU and a solar powered enclosure. Since this was installed earlier this year, neither the CPU or RTU have failed. An ideal solution for companies that have no power on site. Even though the innovation project will be coming to an end in June this year, we have been able to extend the duration of the license from Ofcom for a further 12 months. We will use this time to continue carrying out further tests on the stability and performance of the network. We're also going to start interoperability of the network by introducing different vendor equipment at all levels of the network, the core, the radio network and CPEs. We would welcome visitors to come and see the LTE network and also welcome vendors who would be interested in joining us with this exciting project. Without any doubt, we now know that a private LTE network is a viable communications solution for the UK energy and utility industries. This will provide a secure, resilient and reliable network that is scalable to allow connectivity to hundreds of thousands of network assets 
that may not currently be connected. What we need now is confirmation on what spectrum can be allocated so that we can start working with vendors, not just communication vendors but also OT vendors, so they can start developing solutions that can connect directly onto LTE. I'm really proud of this trial. I think we've achieved an excellent amount of work within a short space of time. Working with the different vendors has been great. We've had our ups and downs, but we've always managed to get through and find a solution to any challenge that's been presented to us. I think the team as a whole has done an amazing job and we as WPD should be really proud of what we've done. The LTE solution is scalable from macro to granular levels for licensed utilities, a cyber secure solution, reliable and resilient to power failure, network failure and site failure, suitable for a range of use cases and can be deployed across all network operators, gas, electricity and water. A single platform for all, ultimately reducing the costs to the consumer, facilitating quicker, easier, cheaper connectivity, allowing more green energy to be connected. Addressing enhanced customer performance and reducing outages, allowing networks to respond to extreme weather events in a more robust and timely manner, managed by the utility industry and predominantly built on existing utility sites. And providing the building blocks of the communications network for the future, a modular concept with upgrade paths offering a future-proof solution. The utility industries can deploy this solution to meet the net zero objectives of the UK agenda that delivers everything we need dependent on spectrum being allocated by Ofcom and funding from government regulatory bodies. My name is Ian Smith, I'm the Logistics Manager for Western Power Distribution. Within logistics, I also have overall responsibility for our telecoms operation. But as a result of this project, I'm also chair of the Energy Networks Association Strategic Telecoms Group. That group is represented by the gas and electricity industry of the UK. And within there, one of our objectives is to explore long-term evolution as a solution or as an alternative to 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G technology. On that basis, we're looking for a viable alternative that will stay on when the power goes off. So we reformed the Strategic Telecoms Group three years ago now with the intention of horizon scanning because technology is moving so fast that as a utility industry, we've been operating on legacy systems and we don't believe is the right telecom solution for our field-based assets. Energy providers, gas and electricity, provide excellent customer service to customers. They want their services to be on, and if it goes off, they want it back on quickly. So what an LTE solution is gonna do is gonna be able to make sure that we can respond and control our assets at a time when the power goes off, because it's resilient to power failure. But it's also gonna be cyber secure, it's gonna help us with our net zero objectives, and it's gonna make sure that you're gonna have a resilient supply that we can respond promptly. The objective being we'll have less people travelling miles but we'll be using a telecoms infrastructure that won't rely on a commercial system. It will bring a standalone platform that will have the right level of investment, the right level of resilience in terms of security of electricity supply, in terms of cyber security where we need it to be able to serve mainland UK. We've got an innovation project which says that LTE is viable. In terms of moving forward it needs collaboration. It started off talking about gas and electricity. We're now talking about government departments. We're now talking about regulators. We're moving from, is it technically possible, to how do we fund it, how do we build it, how do we operate it, and how do we maintain it? That is where the next hurdles are for moving forward.